So this is for the, for the further discussion. But now I want to say that when the catalog appeared, uh, the Guild monitored the situation with the film clubs. And we had the inside list of 150 different um, venues, potential clubs or existing clubs, anything that could be called a film club, whether that be an existing film club or I mean, the startup for the film club, so to say. So we had a base of 150 venues. We could have worked with the list, but in the end, we had around 20 or 30 film clubs out of that long list that really exist as good venues with which we could work further. At the same time as the catalog was issued, we started working on the site of the guild. This is the address of our site, www.rg.org.ru. I'm just telling what we wanted to do. So we have the resources, and there was an understanding how we can work. We even constructed the website for this guild, and the site gives a chance to promote the documentaries. So we have a chance to, for example, make a profile of the film. For example, this is a film by Radkevich. The name of it is My Friend Boris Nemtsov. This is not fully done profile. We were thinking that those who make the film should make the profile and should renew the profile. So, for example, if you're awarded a prize at a festival, then you update your profile. So our thought was those who own the rights would also renew the profile. Well, they're not always renewing that, but the resource is there. So the thought was that this website would be the main instrument, the main tool of communication between those who make the films and those who are interested to screen those films. So little by little we gathered the database of those films. Also on the site, every film club has a chance to make the profile and do the information exchange, exchange contacts, content, anything you need. Well, the question is that whether people are using that resource or not. Our site also gives an option to find the film that you need to find. This is the script that I made a few days ago. This is how it looks in the search engine. You can write the name of the film then you check whether the film is in the distribution catalog. And that's the catalog that I mentioned before with 35 films. And then, so this, film, this films can be put there as a database. So this is the example of the films that were in the initial database. I will later on tell about our plans, what we want to do, how we need to change this database so it could be more up to date. This direction we decided to postpone. As the time was going, we started doing other projects dedicated to the documentary films in Russia so it would reach the audience. So, in 2014, we have a new program. What you see in front of you is about the film clubs. These are the 20 film clubs that exist. You can see them on the map. That's the map of Russia. So it's both a map and the list. Every now and then I get a question from the audience, how do I find the film clubs? Here's the information, the film clubs on the map and the list of the film clubs. And again, I must say that communication is not working a great way in Russia. So we do have the site, but it's really not working because the audience is not using the resources that the site offers, or maybe they just don't know how to look, how to use it. It's easier for them to write an email to me and ask a direct question. And of course, I would like them to use the site, take the information from the site that's available. That would be automatic question and answer. Session. Now, I want to say what happened further between the guild and the film clubs. 
So again, I remind you, my presentation is called the dreams and the reality, and then you see that dreams were one hand, the rea reality was really on the other. When it became clear that that the guild would do only non-commercial distribution of the documentary films, so we started to have a few projects together with the Ministry of Culture of the Russian Federation. And then everybody understood that if you get the support from the Ministry of Culture, then there are a lot of films being produced, more than 200 per year, but then we don't know what's happening with those films. The most talented ones have a chance to be screened at the festivals, including international festivals, but what happens to the rest of the films? Nothing. And then a lot of questions were raised. We created then the board of experts at the Ministry of Culture, and the representatives of our guild were part of this council. They were, look, they were watching those films and trying to understand what to do with them. Of course, there were a lot of issues, a lot of discussions, and then some people were asking whether some films should be given money at all. But among those films, there were a lot of very good films. And as a result, we had a lot of programs. For example, in 2014, the program 29, that was the name of the program because of all the films, we chose only 29 films that were really good films. And those films were screened later on in the film clubs of Russia. That was a no, not commercial release. And the concept was the following. If the Ministry of Culture gives the money for making those films, then the audience has the right to watch them for free. So those 29 films were announced and were shown all over Russia. Among those films were the hits, for example, uh, the film by Maria Razbivkina, The Optical Axis, the, the, the picture of it you see on the, on the slide. But of course, this program raised a lot of questions, a lot of discussions, because not all the right holders liked the concept. They were saying, well, we want to distribute our films in one way, and then you are distributing them in another way. What if it conflicts our interests? But anyway, what happened, happened. And in 2014, we had the next program, and in 2015, we had another program yet, respectively 20 films, and now we are watching the... 285 films, our experts are watching those films, the process is almost over, and very soon we will have the program called 2015. We will have the film supported by the Ministry of Culture, and we will form the program for screening them in the film clubs. So that you would understand, I'm giving you statistics. In 2014, there were 235 documentary projects supported by the Ministry of Culture and an overall budget was almost 7 million euros. In Russian, you see the huge, horrible numbers. That's because of our exchange rate. But what it means is the industry is evolving. Something is being made. Now I want to talk about the major problems, major issues. For the last two years, I've been working in this area. So what can I say about the main issues within the film club's network? Some documentary filmmakers don't even consider the film club network as a life for films. Even people who like the film clubs, who present their films there, they're saying that film clubs cannot influence the development of industry of documentary films at all. It's just an image effect. And it's very nice to see the audience. It's very nice to talk to them. It's sweet to see that even after the festival, somebody is watching your film. But it cannot change or influence industry because there is no money. When I was preparing this slide, I was looking at many photographs that we have after we did the reports of a 
after the screenings, and I chose this one because it is the least beautiful just to demonstrate how the film club exists in Russia. So it's a very, very small room. Maybe it's even the room in high school. People sit on the chairs and just look at the television screen. There are not too many people, just a bit more than 10, but there are people that really wanted to watch that movie and to talk about it. There are a lot of film clubs like that. A lot of them do not, are not legally registered. They do not have a schedule. They just exist thanks to the enthusiasm of people who come and watch the film. So it's the Russian word kvartirnik, so something happening in the flat in the apartment. But this is also something that's happening, and the movies are being screened. The question is that are those clubs part of the industry? I think no. Now, further about the problems. So not enough money, not enough resources to develop the film clubs. For example, you have a bright, talented leader who can create a film club, but that leader didn't get any money, so he cannot pay for the room, he cannot pay for the technicians, he cannot pay to the right holder to show the film. So it's just a very simple problem, no resources. But there are not so many leaders either. A lot of the times in the regions, people who say, well, I am the organizer of the film club, well, in reality, uh, just a person who needs to learn a lot. He or she needs to learn more about documentary, per se, as a genre. He or she needs to learn how to organize an event that could be interesting, that could create a discussion. So they need to learn how to make a good event how to advertise that in social network, for example, because they lack experience. So somebody has to teach those future leaders. There is no, syst there is no systematic work. There is no system. So what I see is people look at the film club as a hobby, as a very temporary occupation. If it turns out that those film clubs eat a lot of time and they don't bring money, then at some point the person burns out and just leaves that hobby. And then they close the club, that's all. And it's really hard to put it back alive. And if you don't have any money, you cannot put it back alive. Um, there's a lack of hit films. What do I mean by hit films? The film clubs that work seriously, they're very interested for people to come. And it's not enough for them to get the films that were financed by the Ministry of Culture, by the films that our experts have chosen. They can look at this list and say, well, there are two films that interest us in this list, and the rest of your list, I'm sorry, but we're not interested. What we want from you would be the films made by the Russian directors, received awards at the international festivals, were screened in the international, in other countries. So please give us those kind of films that are world famous, that already had their audience, that were appreciated by the audience. And even if people have to pay, so like roughly 100 rubles, they still will come and watch the screening, even though it's not for free. So our thought is that to announce among the members of our guild, to ask the right holders present their films. And it doesn't matter whether the Ministry of Culture supported the films or the Ministry of Culture didn't support the films, but the important thing is the life of the film is done. The life is over, so they would give us the films, we would make the list, and we send that list to film clubs. And then the film clubs would work directly with the right holder. So a guild will step back and let them work together directly. For example, we have a great film club called Oil in the Yaroslavl. They have a great club, they have a great audience, and I think it would be great if the organizer of that film club would work directly with the right holder. And for example, they organize the screening for many, which is commercial screening, but people would still go and watch the film because it's a respectable film club with a reputation. But the trick is to make another catalog 
I think that would be a very interesting work process. The film clubs will have a choice what to show and what not to show without any pressure from the Ministry of Culture, with a, without any recommendation from the Ministry of Culture, and that will be very um, natural selection by the audience, and that will be much more expert than any other council. I should really not complain that there is no good audience, uh, the good audience that understands what the documentary film is. And we should not talk about St. Petersburg and Moscow, because there are a lot of, there's a lot of very good audience, quality audience, but if you think about the other cities and towns of Russia, there is no good audience who is used to the documentary films. A lot of people think that documentaries are boring, too long, why do we have to pay for that? It's boring enough, so they just don't go. So there's a lot of work to be done. We have to explain to the audience that it's a um, genre of content that could be interested if it's presented in the right way. And the last problem that I would like to mention today for our non-commercial distribution within the film clubs is that there's no motivation. People don't understand why do we need that. The right holders, we'll talk about the directors, they don't really understand. They would like people to watch their films, but they really don't understand the process till the end. They lack motivation to send those links so that people can download their films somewhere, to send some photographs for people to promote the film. Of course, the director is happy when he or she is invited to go to the audience, for example, in the Ural Mountains. But on the other hand, if you as a director come and there is half empty, half empty audience, then it's not really great. They want the film to be cheered, they want the audience to understand the film, to be happy. So a lot of the times the documentary film directors take it as a reality that after the festival the film would not go anywhere. So they would use their energy for making another project instead of wasting it for making communication with the film club network that is not really a developed network per se at the moment. And the film clubs also start posing the question, why do we do that? We're not making any money, our audience doesn't pay. And people can chase us out of the room that we have now to show the film. So there are a lot of problems that gather, that accumulate, and just stop the system from developing. So we would be happy to have the experience of our foreign colleagues who could just help us and show and just make another approach. That's all that I wanted to say. I'm not sure we have film clubs in Denmark, do we? I don't think so, but we of course have a lot of documentary initiatives like Docs Bio that make sure to bring documentaries around in the country and not only in the big cities. And all these in initiatives are supported by the state, they cannot stand alone. I mean, these Docs Bio are films which are being sent around with the support by Danish Film Institute. Um, and in Sweden, I suppose you have Folkets Bio. Is that also supported by the state, or how is it working? Stina Gardell, Swedish producer. Uh, we have film clubs in Sweden, yeah. And, and I was really inspired of listening to you. Uh, you are talking very fast, but I try to <laughs> catch up. Uh, uh, I think film clubs is a great idea, actually. It's a good idea uh, as one of the rooms for, for seeing our films. Uh, we have, of course, good support from the government in Sweden. So, so I'm very happy to have such a great arrangement. We have Folkets Bio, that, that is uh, uh, one of the art house distributors. They also have support, I think. All these kind of different uh, places has a kind of support, isn't that? Yeah. 
but uh, it, it was very inspiring. I would like to talk to you uh, when we have lunch, if possible. I would be happy to talk to you during lunch. Thank you. So we come back to this number. That is it, 200, 250 films being supported by the Ministry of Culture, documentaries by the Ministry of Culture in Russia. And actually, they don't really have a distribution, some of them. What, 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 is, what, what is the big problem? Does it have to do with, with the quality of the films, if I may be a little impolite? Or, or what is it? What, what would your dream be? That's a wonderful question. It's really hard to answer it. My colleagues from Russia are smiling. That depends on the Ministry of Culture, I have to say, and depends on the system that exists in Russia with the industrial support for documentary films. Yes, it's true. Nobody was thinking about distribution up till recently. Those films got the support, but... And that's it. Maybe somebody helps me. I have a very short comment about the distribution. The problem is that sometimes there is nothing to distribute. The film is done, but there is no film per se as a film. It's just material. It's just good material that is put into archive, and there is nothing to distribute. So a lot of the times, producer is not interested to make a film per se. He is interested in getting the money from the Ministry of Culture, and that's a problem. And then you were part of the expert council that was watching the. I was. I, I was in this board of experts, so I'm happy to answer. It's true that the quality of film, a lot of the times, is not, shall I say, not for the audience. A lot, some of the films supported by the Ministry of Culture, they get the screening. They're screened on television because the television channels buy the films, because I'm also the editor of the television channel Culture. And then recently, that TV channel is buying the films that were made with the money of Ministry of Culture, and the films are screened on television. So that's, that's the distribution, and that's it. But what I want to say is that the quality of the film is not always high, but the good films do have the audience, the television audience, the festival audience. So I also want to add that the system itself is really far from perfection. The system is not targeted to deliver this film to the audience. So maybe they have some other targets, I don't know. If the producer is really producing the film, then the audience sees the film, that's what I can say. I also want to add something. I'm, I agree, a lot depends on the producer. We also got the subsidy from the Ministry of Culture, but our motivation was not getting the money from the Ministry of Culture, but the screening to show it to the audience. So right away we talk with the television channels that we need that screening. Uh, I'm, my company is Stella Invest in St. Petersburg. But we show, we have screenings all over Russia, not only in St. Petersburg, so a lot depends on the producer, I must say. And then coming back to the film clubs, there is a very good film club in St. Petersburg in the Rodina movie theater. And then using the opportunity, I want to say that on October 12th, in that film club, we will have a presentation and meeting with the directors of my studios and we'll show three films that, were uh, that received the subsidy from Ministry of Culture. So a lot depends on the producer. And the Ministry of Culture should not be like mom and dad doing all the steps for the baby, right? I want to help Maria and say after lunch, I'll have my report and I will be happy to answer the questions as well because I have something to say. You know, when you were talking, I remember that I used to be one of the founders of the film club. It was quite by accident because I was the head of the nightclub 
and the nightclub has some free time when there is no night. And we had some people who initiated the creation of a film club. And that film club had a fiasco. It didn't work out. You know, for the entrepreneurs, that's not something profitable. But that doesn't mean the idea is a utopia. What I can say from my experience, number one, comfort. The person has to be comfortable in the film club. He or she has to come and enjoy the screening. All those film clubs, as Maria was saying, a person was working very hard making a film. He made a good film. He made a good film. And then his film is screened like that, like on the slide you see on Maria's photo. And it's just very sad, because if you're sitting in the back and watching that little television, you can't really appreciate that film, even if the director made a really good one. If the sound is perfect, if there's good philosophy, you cannot appreciate that in such a setting. About the hit films, Maria mentioned that there are no hit films. I think the problem for Russia for no hit films is there's no guarantee that the content is not harmful. How do you guarantee that, you sc that if you screen the film in the film club, it would not be stolen, it would not be shown on YouTube or somewhere else? So there is no protection for the content. And that's for producers very important. So judging from my own experience, I can say that there is no centralized enterprise for protection, for the rights protection, because otherwise it's unsystematic, just a few clubs. If there is a system of film clubs created, so the film clubs would be like a movie theater, for example, so the person gets a satisfaction from the screening, from watching the film, then and then if the protection is provided for the content, then yes, yes, that idea would live. I also wanted to ask, I'm the representative of a production company. We're more interested in feature film and commercial films, but as any company that started developing, I wanted to ask about the distribution. What are the problems of distribution? We started to think of making our own content. We decided to make something on our own. We decided to invest some money that we have to invest in the, in the intellectual property rights. And that's, of course, as I said, we're mostly concerned with feature films. We thought about also creating documentary films, not only feature films. We, by the way, we made a project together with National Geographic, so we know something about documentaries. So we decided to invest in the intellectual rights. And we encountered an issue. When you invest in the rights, you want your investment to be a long-term investment, that it would bring profit for a long time not just make a movie, relevant movie, show it, and then this film is gone. It doesn't bring any more money. That we don't want. After talking with professionals in the film industry, we see that there is no understanding of why we should invest in the documentaries. If you don't have support from the government, as my colleagues were saying, somebody has the support from the government, but my company does not have any support from the government, at least now. So the money we want to invest, we don't understand why we would invest them in the documentary films. So I think the history of documentary films in Russia is not is showing that there is no interest in investing. When we talk about the documentary films, we should understand that, for example, we make this documentary for a certain TV channel, then we'll have some financial result. 
so there will be also a way to the audience. But if we remember that it's the film d'auteur, it's the author's film, then it's then producer is not sure that there will be money in the end. And then, then again, it's a dead point. There's no um, understanding why we would have an investment. So for producer, it's completely not profitable. And there is no communication between distributors and producer. I'm sorry that I'm talking too much, and then I'm probably talking about various things not connected. But I think what's important, we should talk why we should invest in the documentary films. One needs to talk about that. Thank you. Let me comment on, uh, on your contribution. Uh, at present, we have a boom in educational programs, projects. Uh, there is a huge number of people wishing to make documentaries, and they're uh, really very talented. And um, um, our um, our schools, our universities uh, are running to capacity. Some of the students are doing quite happily. Um, other, um, other film schools, other cinema sc uh, schools, a bit less so. I've got several comments and one question. Uh, the question is probably most important. Um, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that both uh, the authors, producers, and the views have different motivations regarding content and um, quality of documentaries. And um, as far as viewers are concerned, the palette is really very broad. There is a huge range of opinions and requirements. And if you uh, if you take a, um, a different look at um, this uh, at the subject, um, there are topics, there are authors, um, there are viewers, and the point is to bring them together. There are um, diametrically opposing approaches and positions, and uh, not every audience will be happy with um, every um, every creator every artist. So you have to be really analytical about um, which films you uh, you offer who. Uh, and uh, of course you have to be uh, you have to be very careful selecting the right films for the right audience. Um, of course um, wishing uh, wishing to have a good enough audience um, is probably is probably a bit preposterous and uh, it's all the question of um, of the right selection of the right films for the right audience. And uh, the, the film clubs um, indicate that um, basically uh, people have um, this huge urge to socialize, to communicate about documentaries. Um, and as far as um, our um, internet audiences um, are concerned, um, uh, online users um, very often don't wish to socialize. They socialize in a different manner. Um, are there any differences in how you uh, resolved the um, questions about right, uh, rights ownership in the past and how you're doing that now? So when you release, uh, when, you, when you give away your content without wanting to. What do you mean? Uh, do you mean? Do you mean in 2013 when we were publishing our first catalog? Okay, let me tell you. The first wave was uh, we prepared um, a contract between the guild and the um, copyright holder. Uh, about licensing, exclusive license. Oh no, that came later. Um, it was about uh, distrib uh, distribution rights for two years. It was a very civilized approach for 
that time. He also saw the 31st films that uh, um, were uh, included in the catalog signed um, such agreements between corporate holders and uh, distributors. And when this whole story with the Ministry of Culture uh, started, they didn't have any choice. They understood uh, that they couldn't protest, and uh, otherwise they wouldn't be able to. Um, the authors, uh, the, uh, the creators, didn't, uh, didn't protest because uh, they understood they uh, they wouldn't be uh, given any uh, governmental funding. So, and. Was there any feedback? The Guild's website has a special section uh, called Special Projects. And uh, it, has, uh, it has information about Program 2013, Program 2014, full information about this. Now, when we want to create an alternative uh, distribution service or facility, apart from what is happening between us and the Ministry of Culture, we don't want to sign a doc any talks with anyone because I spent two years to uh, to create this um, uh, non-exclusive license. And uh, I understood that nobody will be wanting to sign it for their own reasons. Hello, I come from Arkhangelsk. And um, there are all those leaflets there uh, that um, advertise our festival uh, Beregimia, uh, which is going to take place later this year. And um, uh, I wanted to share our experience, probably a very unique experience, about um, uh, the promotion of uh, documentaries. Uh, in the Russian news, there are two major um, northern festivals. Uh, number one is northern character and uh, Beriginia in Arkhangelsk. Uh, and we decided, uh, we decided to um, create a, a film marathon. Uh, we called it the, uh, the community or the Commonwealth of uh, Nordic festivals. Uh, we collect uh, we, can, uh, we compile a program from the Mamansk Festival, uh, from Message to Man, and a number of other festivals. Okay. And, and why was I, uh, why was I talking about this? It's uh, it's a form of pro promotion too. Of course, we're working. Uh, we're just groping around. We don't have any um, clear direction in our work, but we will see. We will see um, if audiences are ready for um, for our films. How enthusiastic they will be about it, uh, about them, um, whether the seats and the cinemas will be filled. Akankelsk is a huge area. It's, um, um, it practically equals France in size. But it's a... Uh, but uh, we can promote your films, we can promote your documentaries uh, in Arkhangelsk district, something that um, our viewers do not um, see on TV, because the TV watches uh, largely um, watch soap operas, soaps. We'll be showing documentaries for free, but, but, uh, you were talking about a catalogue uh, that would be independent of the Ministry of Culture and uh, their criteria. Um, however, uh, for our regulatory authorities, it is very highly important to have a paper uh, with seals uh, to make everything offic uh, official. It's important to have some uh, major guild supporting the initiative. So we have to have this legal framework. We have to have um, 
a serious organization standing behind this initiative, backing it up. When we were creating the uh, this program, we don't have uh, we didn't have and we don't have uh, the funding to buy the films, but uh, the um, uh, filmmakers have been really uh, very kind, and they uh, they're helping us with uh, with their products. Israel didn't give us anything. But Извините, да, я еще у меня есть еще один такой комментарий, и просто для меня очень важный вопрос. I'm sorry, I have um, a tiny commentary, and it's a very important question for me, and I want to ask it. Uh, talking about profit and the producer's interest in documentaries, I would like to know how our international colleagues uh, would uh, uh, look for this interest for producers, this interest factors for producers. To you said you are desperate, you are desperate people, like daring people to be doing, uh, to be working with documentaries. Like, for example, I know uh, villages uh, in uh, uh, Russia, you know, Tmortia, uh, who are lived in by, say, grannies aged 90, and uh, they um, uh, they practice choir singing, a cappella singing. There is uh, one girl who learns, a uh, very young girl who learns uh, singing from these grants. And I want to do this documentary about this girl who keeps this folk art going. But what kind of uh, interest? can you find, uh, what, can, what kind of interest factor can there be for producers to support this initiative? A series of anthropological festivals. It's a, it's a really good motivation. It's a really good motivation. I think it's very difficult to answer that question, of course. I mean, what, what, what will interest, I mean, you have to, to, to go to producers and talk to them and and, and show that you have an idea of how the film could be and develop it, mm -hmm. and then uh, go to somebody who might be able to to uh, give you some money so you can make the film. I mean, it's 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 very difficult to say that because what you are saying is is um, you are presenting something which is a very small theme as such, but it can be a big film. I mean, you know, a small place, big film. Am I saying things in a, in a clear way? I mean, we have so many um, examples of films which, where you, maybe, maybe you read the three lines and, and it's about something in a small, distant, remote village and, and a couple of old people and so on, and you say, okay, okay, am I interested in that? And then you see the film and then it's a fantastic film. I mean, you, you can... You can't say, and the other way around, you can see some something which is a big thing, um, maybe very well known thematically, and then it can be a poor film. I mean, it's it's it it depends. It depends on talent, passion, skills, skills, skills is uh, cinematic skills, of course. Okay, I just want to say again, thank you for for bringing so many people. You know, to to uh, to comment on on the situation. I mean, we were going from film clubs to to uh, the situation in in many many aspects of documentaries in 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 Russia, and we will continue with that. Of course, we want to know more. I I don't know what 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 the rest of you are saying. What I'm just saying is that now I'm confused on a higher level, huh? On a creative level, maybe. Creative confusion. Uh, I just wanted to comment something. I, I am a producer, and, and I, I recognize everything you're talking about, all the problems uh, and so on. Uh, but when you over there somewhere uh, in the corner talked about this picture, uh, and that you thought it was uh, very sad for the filmmaker, uh, and I'm thinking about the digital revolution where everybody are looking in their iPhones or at the train stations or everywhere. Uh, we, can't, we can't stop that. When, when I see this picture, I feel very happy. Because I think 
for me, making documentary films is about creating meeting points. It's about communication. It's about uh, talking to people. I think this is a lovely picture, and I'm very happy that you chose this one, not the one in an in a, in a ordinary cinema, because we all know everything about sitting in a good cinema with good sound. And of course, I would love all my films to, to be, be shown in, in that sense, but I think this is beautiful. People want to meet, people want to look at the film, people want to talk to each other. So I think we shouldn't be too snobbish. Do you say that? Snobbish? I think it's, it's, this is better than nothing. But I don't know your organization or if it's good or bad or anything, but I love this picture. I'm really glad that you like this picture because um, I love the um, home home concert format, home performance co format, and I think um, I knew that this picture could uh, could arouse many questions, but. Uh, there are um, lots and lots of um, uh, film uh, club venues that look decent. You don't um, don't you uh, leave under the impression that all our film clubs are.